Throughout the course of history, there have been periods when mankind made rapid advances. And then there are those other, much more numerous times that remain rather unnoticed as transitory periods. Now, at the dawn of the third millennium, how will this age be judged by posterity? And more importantly, what form will that posterity take? And what kind of judgment will it be capable of? For soon, much sooner than we anticipate, mankind as we currently know it might radically change. Burn, baby, burn! Something new is emerging. While people have talked about global peace, the end of history, and the disappearance of ideologies, an army of scientists around the world has continued working in their laboratories. The impact of this work is now slowly surfacing. Technology is about to take over the torch of history and will guide us to a new era. The disparate activities of scientists in the fields of genetics, robotics, artificial intelligence, bionics, and nanotechnology seem to be converging towards one goal, to transcend human limits. It will lead us inexorably towards a transhuman age, an age when more evolved species will leave mankind behind as a fossil in history. We are shifting to a trans-human base. We've come out of a humanist time, and now we're redefining what it is to be human. Whether we like it or not, we're becoming cyborgs. We're becoming transhumans. We have the opportunity now to try to do things uh, better uh, than uh, nature has done. Why not have a stronger arm than we have? Uh, you know, why not be able to run faster? Why not be able to have uh, tougher skins? If you're going to replace your eye for vision, uh, why limit it uh, to visual? Why not give it the kind of vision a bat has? Give it ultrasound. Could you imagine a Versace body design? Can you imagine a Terry Muller body design? These individuals, the late Versace, was an incredible designer. What if he was a transhuman? What if he was an artist who really wanted to combine art and science? I bet his designs for a future body would be astounding. We really, really do want to violate human limits now, and we're getting closer and closer to the ability to do it. It's what we want. And here we are in the Brain Research Laboratory. Yeah, here's, here's the brain when it was stored. Dr. Robert White is a neurosurgeon at the Cleveland Medical Hospital in Ohio. Now, here are some pictures. In 1963, he performed the first experiment yeah. to keep a brain alive outside the body. This is a human skull here. That's not real. This is a gorilla. See here, when you take the brain out and isolate it, you can take all that if you want. And you keep it alive and live forever. See, it's, it's uh, uh, this is a human brain, actually, and it is fixed. So no one needs to worry about it being alive. There have been many attempts throughout the world, particularly in the, uh, the old Soviet Union, to take the brain out of an animal, they like the dog, for example, and keep it alive with machinery. Now, you can do that with the heart, the kidney, the liver, the lung, all the other body organs, solid organs. But nobody had ever been able to do it with the brain. And part of the reason is, we must remember, the brain is very delicate when it comes to its blood supply. And so when we finally did it, and found that this brain uh, of a highly developed animal uh, had brain waves, had biochemistry, was functioning just as it would. Now, we couldn't talk to it. We could send it electrical signals. We could show that it could actually hear and so forth. But we didn't know whether it was processing the information. But the point of it all is that that moment in time also said to us, if you can do it for the animal brain, you could do it for the human brain. This, this incredibly brilliant scientist, Stephen Hawking, who's a astrophysicist, actually, he is now per, in a wheelchair and literally speaks via a computer. And some people, perhaps unkindly, have described this wonderful man as sort of a head on a computer, basically. But uh, 
he would be somebody who potentially could survive his diseased body through a total body transplant. To prove that the brain was in fact functioning normally while in this state, Dr. White needed to undertake a second experiment, during which he succeeded in transplanting the head of a monkey onto the body of another. The creature survived for seven days before the body rejected the head. In the monkey experiments, these animals are as much a monkey as they were when they were in their own original body. So I would presume, and I'd go beyond that, I would be assured that the monkey personality is retained. So consciousness can be transplanted. Uh, obviously, personality, if you want to speak of the monkey having personality, can be transferred. And so you might ask, where did this bring us as far as the human spirit or soul goes? And I guess you could argue it can be transplanted. We are now becoming the objects of conscious design. And the implications of that are just enormous because we've gone, until now, we've been reshaping the world around us and we can see how dramatically it's been changing. I mean, we've really res reshaped the landscape and we've built a society and altered society and changed everything that's external to us. But somehow we imagined that we were going to remain the same, that there would, that we ourselves were not going to be caught up in this process. And that's not in fact true. We are going to remake ourselves. And it's very difficult to deal with because it will rip free all of the anchors that have until now told us who we are as human beings. We're at the end of a definition of what a normal human being is. Every living thing is defined by its DNA code. The DNA is a long string consisting of four different molecules called A, T, C, and G, found in all living cells. So it is, in essence, a digital barcode that defines us as humans, just as it defines every other life form on this planet. Only the variety of combinations of these four elements makes us differ from one another. The Human Genome Project was started in 1990 as the largest technological enterprise ever, with a budget far outstripping that of the race to the moon and involving hundreds of laboratories around the world, all with one main goal. Fundamentally, it was about determining the complete sequence of the human genome, the three billion letters that make up our genetic blueprint. And we know we have the code before us, and it's truly remarkable. It is a digital code, and buried within that code is information.